so we see that you know we are really privileged as believers right that uh, through to his word the lord did you no know, he said i will not leave you orphans right? and we have god the holy spirit who is uh, abiding staying remaining with us and he's doing all these wonderful uh, works in us uh, so that he might work through us right for the glory of god and you know the work of his kingdom so um it's it's an amazing privilege right to to fellowship with god through the holy spirit to receive from him you know, all that he wants to give us again he does that through the holy spirit and and to be equipped to be empowered to be anointed to to do the works that he's called us to do right so um so uh, you know for us uh, let's um, this is you know like we looked at and prayed in the earlier session that we would invite the work more and more of the holy uh, of the work of the spirit so um like we saw the work of the spirit can be resisted right we can quench the work of the spirit how well he leads us and we don't want to follow or he uh, you know he prompts us and we kind of disregard that right he teaches us and we don't want to receive that so so these are ways by which we can we can grieve the spirit when when we you know having all these things that we indulge in things of the flesh right um this morning uh, like john asked that question you know about uh, uh, sowing to the spirit and sowing to the flesh from um, uh, you know by from efficiency again um the fact that you know having all this like knowing all this when we sow to the flesh then obviously it grieves uh, grieves the Holy Spirit because you see that so much has been given, right? So much has been given, and He is for us, and He's with us, um, and He is leading us to discover those things He has placed in our lives. Um, he's leading us to discover those things that He is, you know, uh, He's already prepared for us and to walk in it, empowering us to walk in it, and so on. So, so it grieves the heart of God when we, you know, turn back and. Uh, and indulge in things of the flesh, right? So, um, so for us to really walk in the spirit, as the word of God says, walk in the spirit, and we will not fulfill the the desires or the works of the flesh, right? To so fulfill, we will not fulfill the desires or the suggestions of the flesh. So much has been given, right? And uh, for us to embrace that, to invite and to walk in it that's that's the privilege of us as sons and daughters of god and uh, that right maybe uh, choose to do that uh, in an ever increasing measure every day right okay so we looked at um, the kinds of prayer all kinds of prayer and prayer also being a weapon um, in the arsenal that uh, the the armor of god the list which is listed um we see in Philipp philippians one that prayer releases the supply of the spirit uh it's a uh, it's a prayer that um i think paul uh requests to be prayed uh philippians 1 and verse 19 okay philippians 1 19 for i know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ okay for i know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ so um the the supply of the spirit you know we know that uh, he indwells us we know that he uh fills us baptizes us and uh, there are many infillings right um we can be filled with the spirit every day if we would ask him and receive from him we know that um but also, you know, God being God and God being infinite, uh, you know, there's always more of him, right? So here he says, you know, for I know that this will turn out he's actually in prison and uh, uh, he's uh, talking about those who uh, who preach Christ even from envy and strife and all that. And then uh, he's, he's rejoicing that in every instance, in some way or the other, Christ is preached. And he's saying, you know, even this whole thing will turn out for my deliverance through 
your prayer and the supply of the spirit right so uh, the spirit of god being supplied um, or uh, you know being made available for paul you know through the prayers of the saints right uh, in uh, intervening in his life and deliverance and so on right so um, prayer uh, releases the supply of the spirit so so if we have questions you know why supply of the spirit when i already have the spirit or why infilling of the spirit when i have the spirit so the simple answer is this that he is infinite there's always more to him um, uh, more to uh, different facets to what we have known him and experienced him and because he's infinite there's always more right he he gives and he keeps on giving there's there's more to him so um more to receive from him as well okay uh jude 20 uh, talks about the love of god praying in the holy spirit um let's uh, read jude and verse 20. but you beloved building yourselves up in your holy faith praying in the holy spirit keep yourselves in the love of god looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Okay, so um, it's actually more to do with building ourselves up in our whole most holy faith, keeping ourselves in the love of God, um, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, the praying in the Holy Spirit is the connection, right? It's to uh, the key to building ourselves up on our most holy faith. So that's what he says, you know, but you love it, building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit keep yourselves in the love of god so uh it would help both to keep ourselves in the love of god and to build ourselves in the holy spirit um uh, build ourselves on our most holy faith we pray in the holy spirit right okay okay yeah 20 and 21 Okay, so um, what are some some of the other uh, things um, that we can see? You know, we worship. Right? The Lord Jesus says, "Those who you know worship God, this is how you must be worshipped. Um, you must be worshipped in spirit and in truth." Right? John chapter four, twenty three, twenty four, um, and uh, Philippians chapter three and verse three also says that, uh, "For we are the circumcision who worship God." in the spirit rejoice in christ jesus and have no confidence in the flesh so in the spirit meaning uh, you know as led by the spirit as facilitated by the spirit and also you know um, john 4 23 talks about in the spirit you know out of our spirit that worship is not something you know it's not a ritual or anything but uh, it's something that is done in the spirit in the inner man right uh, worship god in spirit and truth um, so uh, both those aspects we abound in hope by the spirit romans 15 13 um, we abound in hope uh, and that's a work of god you know when when there is um, no hope, people lose everything right they lose their zest for life when there's no hope there's nothing forward to right when all hope is gone and uh, they they come to a place of being saying that you know you know what is what else is left there's nothing more you know uh, i don't need to continue that kind of a frame of mind very depressing very discouraged but we see in romans 15 and verse 13 now may the god of hope okay so hope comes from him which means that God is always hopeful, or if hope is you know, bubbling up, overflowing, and surrounds his presence. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Okay, God of hope, fill you in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that you and I, we may abound in hope, that increase in hope, have an ever-increasing supply. You know, there's abundance, right? It's not just a meager thing, but uh, ever-increasing supply, that we may abound in hope. How? By the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit causes uh, this God, uh, this hope of God, this, this hope that comes from God, and uh, uh, He will cause us to is fill us cause us to abound in hope by the power of the holy spirit okay so which means that uh, even in the most dire circumstance 
right? through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the believer has an avenue to receive hope, right? even in the most dead end kind of situation. And Paul was there many times. And he, in fact, he says, we carried this sense of, sentence of death uh, around on our necks. Like saying that we carried this in our in our you know in in our persecutions in our uh, in our daily life we face danger we face persecution face death right? and even in those circumstances there was this amazing hope bubbling up hope of eternal life hope of being with Christ you know even if this world should even if this life should end so there was always hope. Right, so something so victorious, something that's triumphant about uh, uh, about the hope that comes from God. Right, so for a for a, for a believer, you know, maybe for ourselves, we find ourselves in that place, saying, "Okay, God, you know, I don't know, uh, I don't know what next." Right, uh, just relax because God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing, and that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right, so many times we think that you know after Bible college what, or after, you know I, I'm in this place at work or you know or, or in this place in life, uh, I used to be this you know in this that season of life it was all exciting and great and I used to be you know productive and you know, I was working but now what maybe you know uh, many of us can find ourselves in that place um, and then we we lose all kinds of lo lose all hope and getting up in the morning is difficult and going to bed just waiting it's like the psalmist says you know, I get up and then you just wait for night and then in the night you're just waiting for morning you know so that kind of a thing hopeless cycle of life now that is broken by the power of the Holy Spirit, who fills you with joy and peace in believing that you might abound in hope, not just for your own selves, but also for others, right? that we can minister by the power of the Spirit this hope. You now, especially for people going through bereavement, people, you know, people uh, having lost their loved ones and maybe lost their job, or maybe, you know, in such a traumatic uh, situations, uh, they ask that question, right? You know, what what else is there? I've lost everything. I cannot take a step ahead. Now, now the hope is poured out into our hearts. Joy and peace poured out into our hearts, unbelievably, you know, uh, unexplaining, unexplainable. Uh, sometimes this peace, uh, which uh, which you can't have reason for. Right, um, you look around and say, "Okay, what is the reason for this joy that I'm experiencing? What is the reason for this peace that I'm experiencing?" You look around, you look, check, and see, oh, you know, things are not that great, uh, you know, uh, relationally, financially, things are not. But I'm experiencing this peace. I'm experiencing this joy. Well, the answer is that it's it's through the Holy Spirit. It's by the Holy Spirit, right? Um, Philippians four says. Um, um, Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, right? which goes beyond our understanding. That's the peace of God, the peace, the, the, the quality of peace that God supplies. Right? And, and we see here that in Romans 15 and verse 13, that, uh, that the God of hope will fill you with this in believing by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right, so so you see that um, God has given us uh, amazing. He's given us Himself, right, and He's given us resources, and He's not left us alone. Okay, so um, as a believer, we need not be hopeless, right. And every time such a thought comes, we can say, "No, no, you know, I'm I will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I receive the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, you know, fill me." Fill me with your hope. Fill me with your joy. Fill me with peace. Right? Uh, Galatians five five. Um, for we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Okay, so it's talking about the finished work of salvation. He's saying that we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Okay. So by the Spirit, through the Spirit. Here. Yeah. We have many scriptures through the Spirit, in the Spirit, everything referring to the work of the Holy Spirit, work done by the Holy Spirit. Uh, okay, let's look at uh, another verse, uh, Colossians 
uh, one and uh, was 18 and Colossians 118 um, is it 118 okay let me just check yeah 18 so yeah it's not 18 18 um, so he is talking about Epaphras and you also learn from Epaphras our near our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the Spirit. Okay, so uh, again, love for God, love for the people of God, um, and declared to us your love in the Spirit. Okay, so we look at some of these things that, uh, that the Holy Spirit does and leads the believer into. And he is also the one who baptizes into the spiritual body of Christ. The minute we believe, we are pray, we are placed, immersed in the spiritual body of Christ, where we see in uh, which we see in one Corinthians twelve and um, in verse thirteen. Right? Um, one Corinthians twelve and verse thirteen uh, says that uh, for by one Spirit we were all baptized. Okay, so by one Spirit. So this is not talking about water baptism or uh, baptism uh, with the Holy Spirit, but he's talking about the fact that we were baptized or immersed or placed into, right? Baptized into one body, that is the body of Christ. Now, as a believer, you've accepted the Lord, you're washed by the blood, you justified, right, made righteous, and we are placed in the spiritual body of Christ. So, so when God looks at us, we are part of the body of Christ, the church, the global body of Christ, or it could be the the local body of Christ. You know, uh, the church in Bangalore or church in uh, you know whichever look whichever place that you are you are at, the body of Christ. And then the rest of the chapter, it, it, it talks about uh, you know whether slaves or free, whether Jews or Greeks, it does not matter. We've been made to drink into one spirit or have this experience of one spirit, receiving from one spirit. And we've been placed in the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, and then he goes on to say, you know, I cannot say I don't need the other member, right? Like a foot cannot say I don't need the hand or I cannot say I don't need the hearing year or whatever you know we all have different functions different gifts and we are placed in one body the body of christ okay and who does that the holy spirit uh, does that right um okay second corinthians 13 talks about the fellowship with the spirit yeah, second corinthians 13 and uh, um verse 14 um uh, the what we normally uh, you know, use as uh, one of the ways to bless the congregation or the benediction, right? The, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You know, normally you know, some you know some churches do that always. Um, pronounce the blessing uh, upon the church, upon the people, believers. Saying, now may the grace of God, the love of the Holy, love of the Father, love of the Father, and uh, um, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The fellowship, the koinonia of the Holy Spirit. Right? Fellowship means partnership. Um, fellowship means sharing, having in common, um, having as one. The, the communion, that 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 closeness and the fellowship, uh, the communion of the Holy Spirit. May it be with you. Right. May you walk in that fellowship. So that's a that's a blessing, right, over the uh, over the believer. Okay. So uh, Galatians, in the book of Galatians, and specifically in chapter three, it talks about you know how does the believer experience the spirit? How does the believer experience whatever the spirit brings into a believer's life? Whether it's the gifts, whether it's the revelation, whether it's uh, you know. Uh, uh, this, this communion and fellowship and so on. How does it happen? It happens by faith. Okay. Um, so Paul, while refuting the some of the teachings that had crept into the church, people saying, you know, you need to keep the law. You need to be circumcised in order to be born again, in order to uh, walk with God. So he's just refuting all that. And uh, in that, he talks about, uh, how did you receive the Spirit? How did you receive the work of the Spirit? It is by 
faith. So that is how a believer uh, receives the work of the Spirit and the things of the Spirit. It's by faith. Okay, so chapter 3, verse 2. Um, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Okay. Then um, uh, the next verse. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Okay, so you've started this journey in the Spirit, your faith in the Spirit. This is how you received the, the works of the Spirit, or the, the baptism, infilling, everything you received by faith. Now, having begun in the Spirit, do you want to complete it in your own strength, right? Or in your own efforts? Obviously, the answer is, you know, it's foolish to try and do that. Uh, verse 5, therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, Okay, so he's saying, whenever you ask for the work or the outpouring of the spirit or infilling of the spirit, okay, you receive it. You you know you in the past you've experienced that. Now he who supplies the spirit to you, and who works miracles among you, okay. Now, does he do it by the works of the law, because you kept the law, because you kept you know these things in the law, or was it because of the hearing of faith. Was it because of faith? Right? Um, so that's that's verse 5. And uh, and then one more scripture. We go to uh, verse 14. Um, uh, it talks about, um, you know, how 13 onwards, he talks about how we've been redeemed. We've been taken out of the curse, uh, taken out of the curse of the law and how we've been redeemed from that to, the negative effects of that, the consequences of that. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Okay, now this is why he did it. Uh, he, this is what he did, right? He became a curse for us on the tree. And this is why he did it, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, that the blessing of the Abraham, blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So um, the work of the Spirit is by faith and through faith. Okay, It's not because of our standard in life. It's not because of our experience uh, in our walk with Christ. It's not because of any other badge or honor or performance, right? It's not even, you know, this might be shocking, it's not even because of our degree of holiness. You must understand that, right? Because sometimes, um, excuse me, uh, sometimes people, you know, well-meaning people might be saying, hey, you need to be holy in order to receive this Holy Spirit, right? But the opposite of that is true, you know, you and the Holy Spirit, whose nature is holy, comes to make you Christ-like, comes to sanctify us, comes to help us walk in a greater or a higher degree of holiness. Okay, so um, so don't condemn yourself. You know, saying I'm not worthy to be used by the Holy Spirit, or I'm not. You know, I still have some work to do. I need to. We will never be better. Or we will never, of our own selves, by the works of the flesh, we will not, we will never reach that place of perfection for the Holy Spirit to come and work in us. You know, just think about it. It's logically, it's, it's a fallacy, right? It does not work that way. The fact is that the Holy Spirit comes when we receive Him uh, by faith, or uh, you know, when we receive his infilling and we receive the ministry, we receive everything, the gifts by faith, so that we can walk in a greater degree of holiness. Right? He enables us to worship. He enables us to see God for who he is. He enables us to discover the plans and purposes of God, the wonderful things that he has for us. He enables us to walk in those plans. For all this, the Holy Spirit does right, for us and in us that we might come to a place of 
being effective and being Christ-like and so on. Okay, so so that's the best part. So that's the that's the that's the beautiful part. That uh, you know we don't have to wait. We don't have to you know uh, uh, get our life cleaned up in order for the Holy Spirit to uh, you know to fill us or to release His gifts in us or to talk to us or to work in us. No. The opposite is what is true. He comes to make us holy. He comes so that by the Spirit, we might put to death the deeds of the body. Okay, so you see, uh, otherwise we will just be waiting. Right? So there's no point. So God wants to step in, uh, in uh, step into our lives, um, and the Holy Spirit wants to come rearrange our lives for the better, empower us so that we might walk in newness of life, so that we might walk in sanctification and all our choices might be pleasing to him. Right? Okay. So several other things. Okay. He strengthens us. Uh, we are a house of God. I think we looked at that. Um, Ephesians 3.16, um, he, he strengthens us in the inner man. Um, let's look at that uh, scripture, Ephesians 3.16. This is again another prayer that uh, Paul prays, right? Like how we saw in um, chapter 1, he prays that prayer for the uh, Ephesian believers. The same thing, uh, he again prays again. Okay, so he says, uh, verse 14, Ephesians 3, verse 14, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole, fa whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man. Okay, let's read that again. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Okay. To, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So to be strong in the spirit. To be spiritually strong. In other words, in, in other words, you know, we might be physically strong. We might be emotionally strong. The Lord wants us to be strong in the spirit in the inner man, to have the capacity to receive from him, to have the capacity to withstand, um, you know, maybe challenges, to have the capacity to withstand all those mountains and all those things that seem to come, that seem to intimidate, because faith is produced in the spirit, right? It's not something that we understand here, but it goes beyond our that understanding and something that enters our spirit, man, right? same as the peace of God which surpasses our understanding, goes beyond our reasoning and rationale and logic, and it's a revelation. It's something that we receive it. Like the fruit of the Spirit. One of the things is peace. What is it? The work of the Holy Spirit, the end or the, the byproduct, the product of the work of the Holy Spirit is the fruit, which is the peace. And so we receive that in our lives. And uh, the peace which goes beyond our understanding again. Right? So, in our spirit, right, we receive revelation, we receive the, the work of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, and uh, we experience, right? To be, so, to be strong in the inner man, to be strong in the spirit, um, to be strengthened uh, with might in the inner man is again the work of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, uh, Ephesians 4.3 talks about how uh, uh, about unity, you know, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Um, you know, he's talking about the body, just there is one body and one spirit, and we were called in one hope of your uh, of your calling and so on. So um, the unity, uh, the oneness of um, uh, in the spirit that we as God's people uh, experience that or that unity, you know, it's it's the unity of the spirit um, of the Holy Spirit. Right. So, uh, you know, I was just reminded of this one thing that we were, uh, uh, when I uh, you know, first came to know the Lord, I was part of this youth group uh, in, uh, in, a, in a small town called Coimbatore, right, um, uh, about seven hours from here, six, seven hours from, uh, from Bangalore. 
Um, so in that youth group, now we had people of different ages. Right? The youngest was, I think, that time studying in uh, uh, maybe, I think, class eight or seven or eight or nine. I don't know. The oldest person was uh, obviously um, you know, uh, uh, someone who would... Um, uh, who had a family and uh, who was working at that time and and everything in between. So the age age was really you know the age range was you know that it was that way. So um, it had people who were in their teens, it had people in their twenties, thirties, forties, and and even beyond. The people who used to come and teach uh, in the youth fellowship were um, you know people who were kind of in the fifties and senior folks and so on. So they were all part of the youth group. It was called the youth group, but the fact is people of all ages were there and there was so much unity. Right? There was so much unity and I can only attribute it. Uh, it's not that there were no disagreements, right? You, you see things, you like, you know, your likes and dislikes are different, but the, there was this bonding, there was this unity about the things of God in the spirit. Right? Uh, and, and that, I can only attribute it to the unity in the spirit, that unity brought about by the Holy Spirit. Because varying ages, varying you know levels of maturity and so on, uh, but God brought about that kind of a you know that kind of a unity. Now looking back, you know, I'm able to understand and realize that hey, this this was the work of the spirit. This unity was brought about by the Holy Spirit, right? So unity among the people of God, the Holy Spirit can bring if we would allow right he he brings that okay uh, fellowship among god's people okay um, let's look at philippians 2 and verse 1 um is it philippians 1 2 or um, 2 and verse 1 okay Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. So he's saying, you know, if there is, you know, in other words, he's, he's saying, you know, there is this, you know, there is consolation in Christ, or there is the comfort of love, there is fellowship of the Spirit. Okay, so uh, in a way of asking the question, um, you know, rhetoric is, is saying, you know, if there is anything, fulfill my joy, you know, knowing fully well that there is. So uh, one of the things that he talks about is uh, fellowship of the spirit, the communion, uh, the fellowship of the spirit. Uh, and for what? He says, by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So this fellowship of the spirit also affects the fellowship uh, among the people of God, right? Um, so he's saying, if there is any love, comfort and love, if there is any um, fellowship of the Spirit, affection, mercy, you, you be the same, right? Let it affect your unity. Let it affect your um, be of one mind, be of one accord, and uh, you know that. Let it affect your fellowship as well, or influence your fellowship as well, right? Okay, uh, a few other things, and then uh, I think we'll we'll move on. Okay, so oh, the Holy Spirit. Oh, this this is uh, something which is important. The Holy Spirit helps us or empowers us to hold on to those things that have been committed to us. Okay, now Second uh, Timothy one fourteen. One and verse uh, fourteen. Uh, let's read verse thirteen and fourteen. Verses thirteen and fourteen. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. So he's talking about teaching, doctrine, sound words. This pattern of sound words. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Okay. So that good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit, is given to us. Now, if we read the verses before that, uh, we we get an understanding of what some of the things that were you know that that were in uh, Timothy's possession. Right? He is in Ephesus. He's uh, he's a leader or a spiritual leader of that 
church in Ephesus. Um, in verse, you know, the same chapter, chapter 1, verse 6, he says, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So, you know, through the laying on of hands, uh, you know, he has received a uh, gift of the Holy Spirit. So he says, gift of God, right, which is in you through the laying on of hands. So he's saying, you, this is reminding, use it, right? So that is in his possession. And uh, also, you know, when you read the uh, other epistle, the uh, second one, you, you you again see similar things, you know, let, um, uh, sorry, the first one, you know, let's just, uh, um, uh, he's, he's talking about doctrine, he's talking about uh, um, you know, several things in the first chapter. Then in verse 18, he says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you you may wage the good warfare. Okay, so he's saying, you know, there were some prophecies. You received some prophecies. You know, these things were made concerning you. So by them you wage the good warfare. And... Um, um, so uh, you know th things like this, um, and he and he says you know give yourself to doctrine. You continue to, uh, and then you have seen my manner of life. You have seen my, you know my teaching. You've heard my teaching, etc. So Paul is um, you know uh, reiterating that to Timothy and is saying you know you keep by the Holy Spirit. You know, all those things you keep by the Holy Spirit. That was uh, all these things that were committed to you. You keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. So, um, so the Holy Spirit really enables us to uh, keep meaning guard, protect, um, walk in it, be established in it. Right? Um, don't lose that. You know, it could be the call of God. It could be uh, you know several things that um, God has put into your life. You know, the giftings and and all that. So he's Paul is saying, you know, you stir them up. You know, don't neglect it. Uh, don't uh, don't ignore those things. So whatever has been committed to us, the Holy Spirit, uh, by the Holy Spirit, we are able to hold on, right? Enabled by the Spirit, and then the, maybe the Spirit will also, the Holy Spirit will remind us, hey, uh, you know, don't do these things. You are losing your grip on what was actually committed to you. Right, this is the call, right? This is the path. Um, but you're making some choices, you're making some decisions which by which you are straying away. So the Holy Spirit is, you know, what is he doing? He's he's reminding, he's guiding. Um, he he who is to, uh, you know, he, he's just doing uh, you know the fact that he is uh, the one who will guide us into all truth, like the Lord Jesus said. He will guide you into all truth. He's guiding uh, into the truth, right? Prompting, guiding, and uh, and and leading, right? So that is how he empowers. He doesn't do it against our will. Okay, we need to understand that. Like all everything that we have seen, the ministry, the work, uh, the empowering, you know, everything is uh, as we cooperate, as we say yes. And as we surrender and eat, right? It's not uh, when we stand in a place of rebellion, or it's not something that is forced upon us, right? He will he will prompt us, he will alert us, he will awaken us to the truth, but it requires our cooperation, right? It requires us saying, and uh, and and our uh, you know our yes to him, right? He enables us to obey the truth. He enables us to endure persecution. Okay, let's look at that. First uh, Peter 1 and verse 22. Okay, verse 22. It was First uh, Peter 1. Okay, I think I'm in. Um, yeah. Right to help us to obey the truth. First Peter one. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, 
in sincere love of the brethren love one another fervently with a pure heart okay um so peter before that he says you know you were you were redeemed by the word of god not by corruptible things not by you know so and he says you know you need to be sober you need to gird up the loins of your mind in the previous verses verse 13 he says that and then um, again he's talking about the soul our mind and which is purified when we obey you know our mind is when we in obedience there is also this purifying of the soul meaning uh, you know all these unlawful impure imaginations thoughts are put away how one of the ways is when we obey right? and uh, obeying the truth through the spirit okay so uh, obeying the uh, truth through the spirit which results in purifying of our minds clarity in thinking clarity in focus so many times you know things are not clear because we are we have not still obeyed obeyed the leading of the spirit once we do that things are clear you know we are alert we realize hey i'm compromising on things you know i'm compromising on things i'm messing around with things i should not and there is a clarity there is an alertness there is a freshness you know which comes to your comes to you your imagination is purified you're not dabbling in sin you're not considering acts of sin you know maybe it's revenge maybe it's giving in to temptation you're not considering all that uh, because you obey the truth right suddenly there is clarity suddenly there is purpose and uh, you know your actions are also in line with that and there is a freshness that comes about right now how does that happen it happens in obedience to the truth and by the holy spirit he leads us he enables us but it is we who obey right again right okay so same um, i think when we move to chapter 4 and uh, when we uh, look at verse 14 if you are reproached for the name of christ blessed are you for the spirit of god glory and of god rests upon you on their part he is blasphemed but your on your part he is glorified so the spirit of god is upon you uh, and he's saying you know you count it a blessing because you are reproached or uh, you know spoken ill of or spoken lowly in lowly terms for the sake of the gospel for the name of christ right so he he, um, he mentions that uh, and also uh, hebrew 6 verses 4 and 5 hebrew 10 talk about you know how we can actually um despise the spirit of god right how we can um, uh, speak lowly of the spirit of god and uh, that's something that we need to avoid right um i think we uh, we looked at it uh, a few times even during our mentoring our uh, hebrews 6 verses 4 for it is impossible those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the holy spirit and have tasted of the good word of god and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they cu- crucify for themselves the son of god and put him to an open shame and so on and and uh, hebrews 10 also um 10:26 or um 26 onwards um if we sin willfully okay and uh, verse 29 talks about how uh how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be taught worthy who has trampled the son of god under foot counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace okay um of course um and then he says you know we are not of those who draw back to perdition but of those who believe to the saving of the soul so so these are some things that we can you know as a believer you know if you're not careful uh, we can end up doing this right uh well we have so much we have been given so much we've been given much we've been given the person of the holy spirit uh to dwell in us but we have the will to resist we have the uh, we have the power of choice to to ignore and to go our own way and and when we do that then you know we reach a place where we have insulted the spirit we have discredited everything that he has done and uh we you know 
willfully if we live in that kind of a lifestyle then it's a it's a state which is pitiable you know for the believer right and we can end up rejecting christ altogether also you know that's the danger so um well when we look at the dimensions of the christian life of the believer you know we we look at these things also right and uh, the most exciting uh, or uh, adventure is the life of the believer and being led by the spirit of god being led by the holy spirit you know romans chapter 8 talks about that says that we are led by the spirit of god those who are led by the spirit of god are called uh, sons of god uh, or children of god sons and daughters of god right um romans chapter 8 and verse 14 uh, for as many are led by the spirit of god these are sons of god for you did not listen, receive the bond, spirit of bondage to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out abba father the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of god okay now um so this is a privilege to be led by the spirit of god into the will of god to know the will of god uh, to know which agrees with the word of god that we might walk and do the things that god wants us to right to be led by the spirit into the will of god which agrees with the word of god to do the works of god okay that's the greatest privilege of a believer okay so um to do that okay to be led it's it's relationship it's not a formula okay um we we will look at several things from now on okay uh, the reason i'm saying that is uh, uh, i just want to reiterate that the importance of that because we are going to look at several several aspects now from here on you know we are going to look at uh, hearing the voice of the spirit um, baptism in the holy spirit we're going to look at you know the nuts and bolts of it right so, you know break it down look at it and uh, and so i don't want us to understand that it's a formula right though we will look at steps we will look at you know um, some of these things uh, in terms of steps we will look take a close look at these things um but it is relationship you know knowing the will of god being led by the spirit of god it the 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 foundation is relationship okay and uh, of course there are tests to know am i being led by spirit of god um when we check with the word when we check with several other things you know uh, well is jesus glorified and so on but the thing is it uh, it starts with our walk and fellowship with god okay so uh, we'll stop here and the next class we will we will look at you know uh, being led by the spirit of god what are those steps and also uh, you know we'll look at our spiritual faculty you know like a we said you know the natural man does not understand for their foolishness to him okay but also he is unable or he cannot receive them for they are spiritually discerned so in order for the believer for us to be spiritually discerning these things we need to understand that we have a spiritual faculty the holy spirit speaks to us in our spirit man and we need to be able to discern understand uh and uh, and and know these things so so they they will be you know in terms of okay steps you know did we see this did we hear this and so on but again i just want to emphasize that you know the 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 foundation of that is our walk with god our fellowship with the holy spirit so it's relationship again okay okay so we'll stop here and uh, look forward to the next class right we'll meet again next uh, thursday okay take care have a great uh, week and weekend ahead god bless bye bye